In the last few videos, we went over the trigonometric ratios and we applied those to trigonometric equations. And we learned that due to the similarity of triangles, the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent functions are going to depend on the angles and not the lengths of the sides that we're given. And in today's lesson, we're going to use that knowledge and apply that to the Cartesian plane. And this is an example of a Cartesian plane. And we're going to see that when we're given a certain coordinate on the Cartesian plane, we can actually determine the angle that the x-axis makes with the origin using what we've learned in the last few videos. So let's look at an example of that more closely. Let's say that you were given the coordinates three and four. And the x-axis coordinate is represented by the first number and the y-axis coordinate is represented by the second number. So what this means is that we have a point where x is equal to three and y is equal to four. So let's look for that point now. x is equal to three over here and y is equal to four over here. So the coordinate of three and four is going to be right about here. So we can draw a point there, that is our coordinate. Now the next thing that we're going to need to do is draw a line joining the origin to our coordinate. So here we have the origin. This is where both our x and y axes have a value of zero. So that is our origin here. And we need to extend a line from our origin to our coordinate, which is right here. Now the next step is going to be to construct a right angle triangle using this line. And the way that we can do that is, if we extend this line down to our x-axis point, we can see that we have what looks like a right angle triangle. We have the hypotenuse here, we have one of our sides here, and our last side is represented by our x-axis here. So we have a right angle triangle. Here is our right angle. And opposite our right angle, we have our hypotenuse here. And now what we can do is we can determine the angle theta. This is our theta. And this theta is the angle that's created between our x-axis and our line joining our origin and our coordinate. So that angle we can determine using our trigonometric ratios. So we can actually redraw this here just so it's a bit easier to see see here we have our right angle triangle, our right angle, and we have our theta over here. And we know from this that this side is going to have a length of four units. Our y over here is equal to four. So we can see that this side has a length of four units. We also know the length of this side. This side has a length of three units. We can see that our x is equal to three here and it starts at zero. So this side is going to have a value of three units. And obviously you can see that these are not <laughs> to scale, but let's just say that this triangle here is exactly what we have here. It's just easier to, to see the lengths of the sides when we're not writing on this Cartesian plane. Now, if we want to determine theta, we already have the length of our opposite side and of our adjacent side. So we don't actually need the length of the hypotenuse side to find the value of theta, because as we can recall, tan theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. And those are two values that we have. So we can easily determine the value of theta using our tan function. But remember that we can actually determine the length of the hypotenuse using Pythagorean theorem. So if you wanted to use sine theta or cosine theta instead, you can easily determine the value of the hypotenuse and then use those functions instead. But in this example, we're gonna to stick to tan theta. So we know that tan theta is the opposite side over the adjacent side. So in this case, our tan theta is going to be four, which is the value of our opposite side, over three, which is the value of our adjacent side. And you'll recall from our last video, if we want to determine the value of theta, we need to use the inverse tan function. And if you're using a calculator, what you're going to do is you're going to press shift and then tan, and it's going to highlight your tan to the power of negative one function, which is the same as the inverse tangent function. Or if you're using a computer, you can use arctan. So arc tan, arctan four over three, 
is going to give us the value of our theta. And if you use your calculator or use a computer to determine the value of arctan 4 over 3, we're going to get that theta is equal to 53.13 degrees. And it's going to be very important to make sure that your calculator, if you're using one, is set to degrees mode and not radians. So we've determined that the value of this angle here is 53 degrees. Now let's say you wanted to determine the value of this angle. Let's make this our theta prime. So now you want to know the value of this angle. Well, let's try first solving this by creating another triangle. So if we were to make another right angle triangle with this as our theta, so we can keep our origin line here. We can keep this line here and we can draw one line connecting this to this and we can draw another line that goes down the y-axis here. And now we've got another right angle triangle with this as our right angle. So let's redraw this purple triangle here so it's easier for us to see. So we have this side, we have this side, and then we have our origin line to our coordinate as our hypotenuse. And we have our right angle here. And this is our theta prime. This is the angle of interest. So one thing that we can see is, again, we can tell the value of two of our sides. We know that this side here has a length of four units because it's going along the y-axis starting at zero and ends at four. So we know that this side has a length of four units. We also know that this side here has a length of 3 units. It's going across the x-axis from 0 to 3. So this side has a length of 3 units. And again, we can use the tan function because we have the value of our opposite side and of our adjacent side. So we can do the same thing that we did here. We know that our tan theta is equal to the value of our opposite side, which is 3 over the value of our adjacent side, which is 4. So we know that theta is going to be equal to arctan 3 over 4. And if you put that into your calculator or your computer, you're going to get that theta has a value of 36.87 degrees. And I forgot to add in that this is actually theta prime. It's not theta, it's theta prime that we're determining the value of. So if we actually sum together our theta prime and our theta, sum together these two angles, what are we going to get? So theta prime plus theta is equal to 53.13 degrees plus 36.87 degrees, which is equal to 90 degrees. So when we look at both of these two angles, we can actually see that together both of these angles make up the entire first quadrant. And together, this is going to make up an angle of 90 degrees. And we can see that it's 90 degrees because we see these two lines are perpendicular to one another. So this entire quadrant is going to be composed of 90 degrees. And that's actually going to go for each of our quadrants. We have four quadrants in this Cartesian plane. Here we have our first quadrant. Here we have our second quadrant. Here we have our third third quadrant and here we have our fourth quadrant and each of these quadrants are going to make up 90 degrees and that means that in our first quadrant we're going to go from zero degrees here to 90 degrees at the top in our second quadrant we're going to go from 90 degrees to 180 degrees in our third quadrant we're going to go from 180 degrees to 270 degrees and in our fourth quadrant we're going to go from 270 degrees to 360 degrees. So our entire Cartesian plane is going to make up 360 degrees. We have 90 degrees in each quadrant and the way that we are always going to measure angles that are made in each of our quadrants is to see the angle that's made between the x-axis 
and our line going in the anti-clockwise direction. So it's going to go in this direction from quadrant one to two to three to four, and we're going to determine the angle that's made between our x-axis and our line going in the anti-clockwise direction. And in the next video, we're going to go into more detail on these different quadrants and what they mean for our trigonometric ratios and the values that they can take on.